Hello. Today I'll be running through some of what I'll call the most popular Python libraries. There are hundreds of Python libraries, but today I'll just be introducing 30 libraries that a Python developer should look into. Of course, whatever you intend to specialize in would affect the library you should choose to use. Knowledge of multiple libraries is very essential in real life scenarios as your employer or consultant or, or customer would most likely want you to be able to apply Python to various scenarios beyond what you are probably used to. So let's just look at some of the Python libraries. The first one I will be talking about is Pillow. Pillow is actually a fork of Python image library. I, I would actually be running through what is already on the slide. At first, Pillow was mainly based on PRL code structure, but later it transformed into something more friendly and better. Experts say Pillow is actually a modern version of PRL. However, Pillow is your trusted company while working with images. So basically, some of the features of Pillow is that you can only open and save images. It supports files such as PDF, Web, P, PC, PNG, JPEG. With Pillow, you can easily create thumbnails. It supports a collection of image filters. So you can read up about Pillow. The next one is Matplotlib, which is uh, a Python library for two-dimensional graphs and plots. So you can also read up about it if you are in a scenario where you need to draw plots. Surely Matplotlib, especially for 2D, two-dimensional, it's very, very useful for it. You can use Matplotlib with different toolkits such as Python, Script, IPython shells, Jupyter Notebook, and many other for graphical user interfaces. Next one is NumPy. NumPy is popular for n dimensional array, which is multi dimensional array. So when you're in a scenario where the array is more than one, more than two, more than three, n dimensional it can be as many as possible. NumPy, I will recommend you learn about it. It's very useful for matrices, working with matrices or working with uh, vectors. Very, very useful. The next one is OpenCV, also known as Open Source Computer Vision. It's ID for image processing. It allows for both read and write images at the same time. It can also allow you to rebuild and comprehend a 3D environment from its perspective to the environment. The next one is request. As the name, as the name suggests, request. For those coming in from the C Sharp, Java, and all the rest, HTTP request. So it's, it's a rich Python library for sending request, get request, post request, of course, returning the result of the request or the response of the request. If you need to know about it, surely go for the request Python library. Keras. Now we are now talking about deep neural networks. Keras is a really good choice. There is Keras, there is a uh, uh, there's Keras, there is uh, PyTorch, then I would, I would also talk about other ones within the deep learning environment. But Keras is the first one. It can be a real good choice. It's open source, it's written in Python, and 
you can run it on Microsoft Cognitive Toolkit, paid ML, of course, TensorFlow. Docaras is now within TensorFlow. TensorFlow now seems to be one of the most popular deep learning libraries. I'll talk about TensorFlow later. TensorFlow, free and open source from Google. Very beautiful library for deep learning. Very easy to learn and has a handful of collection of useful tools. You can use it for machine learning, you can use it for deep learning. So you can read more about it. Tiano also can be used for deep learning, a Python library and compiler for feasible computer programs, optimizing compiler. It can analyze, describe, optimize, and influence different mathematical dec declarations at the same time. It's actually very useful for multidimensional arrays. NLTK, one of my favorites, Natural Language Toolkit. If you've been wondering how, how can I maximize Python, use Python to get unstructured data into structured data format, uh, how you'll be able to read meaning. If you have the flair for natural language processing, then I will surely recommend NLTK for you. Beautiful, tokenization, beautiful. All the steps expected for a natural language processing system NTK has it, and of course, it's open source. Fire is an open source Python library which can automatically generate command line interfaces. You'll be needing a few lines of code, but it is actually very, very powerful. It can derive CLIs from the literally any Python objects. So if you are very good on Linux, very good on Git, Git Bash, or and any other command line program, then consider using Fire. Arrow, this is a practical Python library. It's a friendly library that basically works with dates and time. It comes with a very good API and it supports general schemes. It's a very interesting library for beginners who just have basic knowledge of coding and it can get you know pretty well with Arrow. Flash text is another library that offers easy search and replacement of words from documents. All flash text needs is a set of words and strings. So if you are in a scenario where you need to alter documents, large document files, I recommend you learn about flash text. SciPy, Scientific Python, is used for both scientific and technical computation. Of course, it's free. Very, very suitable for machine learning. It can also be used for image manipulation as well. SQL, Alchemy, very beautiful database abstraction. It's a database ab abstraction like Python. It comes with support for range of databases and layers as possible. And it provides a level of constant patterns developed for efficiency. It's easy to understand for beginners. So if you are looking at um, a Python library that you can manipulate various databases, layouts, etc., the SQL Alchemy, I will recommend. WX Python 
graphical user interface toolkit for Python is powerful wrapper for many computer programs that can be implemented on a variety of digital platforms. Many professionals have this library to be this toolkit to be very effective as an alternative data can be used of course as an extension module for Python. PY Touch an open source Python machine library is based on the Touch library and was initially developed by AI researcher group of Facebook. The good thing about PY Touch is it can be used for multi variational visions like vision and NLP. So if you are considering NLP, PY Touch, NLTK, these are some of the libraries you would use. Luminot is a Python built toolkit dedicated for computer vision. It's alpha quality release and the last version was in 2018. Currently it supports the seamless detection of an object, but in the near future it can do more. To use Luminot, you must install TensorFlow before and so if you need a tool for computer vision, Luminot I will recommend. Deloron is a Python library for enhancing data and time. So this is like the second or third one we'll talk about with regards to data and time. You can easily organize the time for Python projects. All it needs is an authentic date time object, which should be Python based to work. It can work quite well with other Python date libraries. Beautiful Soup is a great Python library. If you've done any course online like um, on Coursera, University of Michigan, you would probably have come across Beautiful Soup. It's a great Python library for parsing. It can parse different broken HTML and XML documents as well. It offers an easy way for web scrapping, of course, getting information on the web by extracting direct data from HTML. Many professionals are really happy with this amazing performance it can save quite a lot of time. So you are looking for a Python library for web scrapping, be able to get data from websites, then Beautiful Soup I will recommend. Bokeh is a data visualization library for Python. It allows for interactive data visualization. It's a special package and it works quite differently other than other data visualization library. This is because Bokeh uses HTML and JavaScript to provide its graphics, which makes it a reliable platform for contributing to dashboards and applications that are web-based. Poetry is an easy tool for Python. It allows you to manage Python packaging and dependencies. While your project depends on several libraries, Poetry allows you to undo them easily. It's compatible with different Python versions and developers are focused on making it work evenly on Windows, OXS and Linux as well. Jensim is another Python natural library processing. Python natural library. Apologies for the processing library again here. This library however, has a moderated level of functionalities, but whatever it does, it does good. It's a smart library for unorganized topic modeling and documents resemblance. Analysis is useful in advanced statistical ML to solve issues. It can get you a handful of natural language processing tasks done. You should give it a try. So this is the third. We talked about PY Touch, we talked about NLTK, and now we're talking of Jensen for NL, Natural Language Processing. Pandas, wow, I love Pandas a lot. We are talking of data frames, we are talking of light data sets. Then um, it's a must, we must learn Python, um, Pandas. It's fast, demonstrative, and adjustable platform that offers intuitive data structures. 
you can easily manipulate any data type as structured or time series data with this amazing package. Python, previously known as Chicken Turtle Utility, is a utility library for Python. It's a useful Python package that comes with a wide range of scope for development. Python is always client focused and provides great support for customers. The Python community is special, specific, goal oriented, and they always focus on contributing to society with innovations of Python. C Sci Kit Learn, also very popular, is a simple and useful Python machine learning library written in Python, Python, C, and C. However, most of it is written in Python programming language. It's free. It's a flexible Python package that can work in a complete harmony with other Python libraries and packages such as NumPy and SciPy. So this, I would always recommend Scikit. Any machine learning person should surely learn Scikit. Machine learning statistics, you should go for Scikit. Network X, it offers immense solutions for studying and diagnosing graphs of all levels. It also helps you to develop and influence the architecture, motion, and functionality of high quality networks. It's a free Python package released under the new BSD license. PyGame is a wrapper module for Python. It's a set of Python functions. It has a set of Python functions and classes dedicated to writing video games mainly. However, you can also write other media multimedia applications with PY game as well. These applications and games are highly consistent. PY game is community driven project since 2000 and for beginners, it's really easy to learn. Text Blob is one of the most simplified Python NLP libraries for test drive data processing. It's available both in Python 2.0, 3.0 and of course above. We mentioned the word simplify because this natural language processing library comes with a very simple API which does the job of different NLP related tasks with full efficiency. Beginners will enjoy this simple API. You know, it's very, very useful for textual data processing. And Myotas is another Python image processing library, it's also known as computer vision library. It offers quite Traditional functionality for image processing is a real fast library that comes with a well-organized code. In fact, Myotas offers the latest dependency to any other third-party platforms. And finally, CVXPI is a Python embedded modeling language for convex optimization problems. It allows you to express your problem in a natural way that follows the maths rather than in the restrictive standard form required by solvers. So this is 30 of my favorite Python libraries. There are tons and tons of other Python libraries, but I will recommend any of these. Most of the things you would work on will fall under any of these Python libraries. So see you next time as we look at other areas on Python. Thanks.